Hey guys, what's up? So check us out. I had this for a little bit over a month and haven't had a chance to do this. I've been working on the other printer down there, which is printing out the A9010. But I wanted to take off that old ceramic tip and put on this uh, fake uh, E3D clone head. Cost about $14 on uh, Amazon. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to put a lot of money in this printer just because it's just kind of like an older printer. But it's, it is pretty cool because I do actually like the direct drive. And I was hoping to, uh, I wanted to upgrade this a little bit so I could maybe like mess with the uh, flexible filament. And what I was reading is that the flexible filament works a lot better with the direct, direct drive extruders than it does like boat and stuff there. Here's some of the other parts you're going to need. Um, you don't have to have these, but it's nice. These are uh, quick, uh, they're called, uh, well, they, yeah, they're not amp, they're, I uh, can't remember the brand name, but it's, uh, they're like the quick connectors for the uh, stock connectors on the back of the uh, extruder here. Or not the, I mean the hot end and the thermosistor. And I also printed out this stuff right here, which is the the little converter pin that goes up in there. There's like an adapter piece, I guess. And then this is the new fan duct that's going to go right there. And then my light kind of sucks in here. Uh, and that should see it's the shape, the square shape of the uh, hot end. And uh, check out what this is for. Some other adapter piece. But all right, so get this going. I'm gonna take this off. I mean, this should just be. I'm gonna take the light off here, LED, and take the fan stuff off. And I mean, this should be a pretty quick thing. So all right, all right. So I need to remove these three Allen screws right here. Well, I'll do that on camera, but and that should remove this. Um, I have a little piece of bone too that feeds into it. Uh, that should do that. Yeah, I should have actually probably taken the tension off first. And then uh, hard on this one hand here. This is not the ideal thing, but I'll be back. So just take these three screws off, and that should separate this uh, extruder uh, mechanism off the motor. All right, there's the old hot hand. So that's what those are connectors are for right there, the ones I bought from DigiKey. Yeah, I couldn't get them on Amazon. I was trying to find them on Amazon, but this little, uh, you know, little connectors here like that, they match those. Um, maybe I'll take this back out to my workbench where I have better light. But I should just go and clip that and remove that. And from here, I should be able to assemble the, uh, the new V6 stuff. So, all right, cool. Alright, so you need to take that little extruder thing off there, and then that little adapter piece fits right in there. It's actually, good, there's good websites actually on there how to do this. So I can't get this on camera. So I, I gotta push that in there and get it flush with the bottom of that, and go to the next step. Alright, so once you get that adapter piece in there, you can just screw it back on there. And, alright. Alright, guys, I made my first mistake here. So this. Uh, heat sink is for the uh, Bowden setup here, which has the Bowden coupler. Well, I need I need a direct drive one that basically there's no thread; it's just basically a hole. So I can either adapt something to screw in there, like a thread insert, or I can just buy another one of these things. So I think I'll end up buying I'll buy a new one. I don't want to deal with thread insert; they're so cheap. So um, all right, guys. So that means I have to be delayed for a couple of days. So. Well, I gotta go back up to Big Red this weekend, so probably next week. So, bummer, bummer. All right, all right, guys, all is not lost. So, actually, I did. See, some guy actually does actually have a, a threaded adapter on Thingiverse that I can use to adapt that, um, just to fill in that void right there to allow the PTFE tube to come through. So right now, I just cut it through, cut the uh, wires off, and I'm gonna put those little connectors on there. These little, little Molex, I think I've already showed you these, to adapt and connect to those uh, connectors right there. So, all right, so I'm gonna get those crimped on there and uh, get it going. So yeah, I can't, I gotta wait till that print finishes before I can print out the other adapter. So that's why I, I always like having one printer going uh, in case I gotta print out something like this, you know? So, um, all right, cool. All right, got the, uh, crimps on there connected and soldered yeah you should try to solder everything if you can because I mean you're talking about lots of moving parts here 
and moving wires so definitely makes it uh, more stable all right get the connectors on all right there it is there are the connectors what's it called it's called a Molex. I think a two milliliter put a link where I got it um, got this at DigiKey like I said Amazon didn't have those they had this other style one they had this uh, it's, it looks the same, but it's different. The connector, the side piece connector is on, is on a different angle here. So, yeah, it's, yeah, I bought those first, and I, I didn't realize later I had to come back to DigiKey and get those. All right, so I know my lighting is pretty shitty here, but, uh, all right, get this connected, and, uh, got to wait to get the, uh, print out the uh, little adapter piece. All right. All right, so that's a little threaded insert right there. I'm going to put that right in there. And that's going to create a stable environment for the uh, PTFE tube coming through, and I'll show you that in a second. All right, so see how that little uh, nubbin thing comes out right there, the little piece of PFT tubing? That's going to go into that the insert that I put in there, and there's a little notch for that PFT tube to go into it, and it just fits up there like that. All right, let me get it mounted. Get it going. Alright guys, had the fan ducked in and this thing in. I also put an extra support structure under there, if you can see it or not. Right there, this extra piece of plastic. Down there. So, um, I'm actually not going to use the, the stock fan. Uh, I'm going to put a 40 millimeter fan on there. So I'm going to print out uh, I have something similar to this. This goes to one of my other printers that I'm doing an upgrade for. My uh, I'm actually going to put an E3D hat on, on that thing too. But it's going to go there. Got a 40 millimeter fan on the front here. And I'll have this 50 millimeter on the side like that. So, all right. It's probably overkill. I mean, I could probably get away with an R40. Actually, I might even do that. I don't know. All right. All right, guys. So the first phase here. Um, so that's a little fan duck right there. Then I also have a, a sock on there, a little blue sock. You can see that. Eventually, this guy, I, I did actually print out this little cover for the 40 millimeter, but I don't have the 40 millimeter fan yet, so that's actually going to go right there. And then I decided to get that bigger fan off of there, that 50 millimeter fan, because I think it was actually overpowering anyway. I don't think I need that much, you know, it's, it's, it's blowing too much air, so it was actually coming back the other way, so. Um, that's that. I gotta tighten these wires up. I'm a, I'm a very visual person, so this will be very clean. I'm done. Um, so I gotta set the uh, inductive sensor to make sure, and then I'm, I got hardly any clearance from the tip, like barely any clearance. I might find a way to see if I can lower that down or bring this up, but it's pretty tight, compacted here, but it's gonna it look pretty good when I'm done with it. So, all right. Hey guys, there's my first print with the uh, cloned E3D head. It's not clear of those wires, but there it is. Doing a XY Z cube, calibration cube. So I'm still gonna put a fan cover on there or upgrade to the 40 millimeter. And then, <clears throat> so actually I'm running Marlin 1.1.9. And the easiest thing to do for me is I just took the thermosistor out of the old, uh, the old hot end, because when you upgrade the uh, to the E3D clone or the real one, it's it's the thermosistor that you have trouble troubles with. So the fact that I took the uh, the thermosistor out of the uh, regular, uh, you know, the what's it called, the uh, printer bot, uh, Ubist hot end, that uh, I had, I just had to drill a hole a little bit bigger on my uh, the uh, what's it called, the uh, hot end to fit the larger uh, thermosistor, and that was it, so we'll see how this goes. I'm running PLA, 210 degrees, Cura. My uh, Z offset was uh, negative uh, 0 0.4, or negative 0.4. All right, working, cool.